In this problem, we wanted to determine how much is the amount of stress at different location within a rod, which contains two concentrated forces, which are shown by P1 and P2. Also, it has a distributed load, which is shown by W. This distributed load seems to be kind of new for some of you. So let me first give you an example about what kind of distributed load do we have in the real world? So how many of you, raised by hand, have played Thug of War? Let's try to just simulate that. There is a rope here, and there are two teams on the sides. Force that comes from our hand is applied on the body of the rope. So that force is going to be distributed over a certain length of that rope. This is similar to that case. We do have two concentrated forces. Also, there are forces that are applied over the length of that rope. That force is shown by the red small arrows that are acting on the rod. Those forces in this case are pulling that rod to the right side. P1 is also pulling that to the right side. P2 is compressing the rod, so that is in the opposite direction. Also, these forces are acting at different locations. So given that, we want to understand how much are these stresses at two different locations shown by X1 and X2? X1 is a cut section located 120 millimeter to the right of the support. And the other point is located 260 millimeter to the right of that support. For solving this problem, similar to what we have seen in the videos, we need to follow three steps. First, determine what is the cross-section area. Second, determine how much is the internal force, which requires us to use the concept of free body diagram that we have learned already in statics. And third, divide force over area to determine how much is the stress. I guess the first part, which is determining the area, is uh, pretty simple. This is a rod with a diameter of 35 millimeter. The area is pi over 4 diameter squared, and I can calculate the area here. Second part is the challenging part for this problem, where we want to determine how much is the internal force. To do that, we need to use the concept of free body diagram. First, I'm going to determine the internal force for case A, in which the cut section is 120 millimeter to the right side. Once you cut this section into half, you will have two pieces, one piece on the left, one on the right. Which one should we use as the free body? Which side is free? the left side or the right side. The right side is free. The left side has a support. It is not free. So we are going to consider the right side. We are going to put all the external forces acting on that rod. Then we need to put one unknown force at the cut section outward from the cut section. Some of the forces in the x direction should be equal to zero on this free body. This is the free body that we have formed already. For this problem, starting from the left side, F1 goes to the left, so I assume that is negative, plus P1, because P1 goes to the right side. P2 would be negative. Also, we have the distributed load. How can I calculate the resultant of the distributed load? Remember that thug of war example? This distributed load is acting on the entire length of that part. I'm going to write it as W multiplied by L, and L stands for the length of that free part. And some of these forces should be equal to zero. So the total length of the beam is A plus B, and the cut section is located 120 millimeter to the right. So the length of the free part is going to be A plus B minus X1. Plug in the values that we have for this problem, and that would give us the internal force at that cut section. Once we determine area and force, the last part is super easy. Just divide force over area to determine how much is stress. Remember, there are three steps. First, area. In this problem, super easy. In some problems, no, it is not. So it depends on the, the type of problem. Second, we need to determine the internal force. Internal force requires us to remember what we have learned in statics. Free body diagram. We form the free body, put the forces, use equilibrium, determine how much is the internal force. Last step is typically the easiest part. Divide force over area, and that gives you the amount of stress.